So today we're going to be talking about the six things that I wish I knew as a new coach. And really, they're the things that I learned on my journey. I stepped out of the classroom and into coaching and very quickly learned some lessons along the way. And I'm going to share them with you in stories tonight. So let me tell you about one of the teachers that I had on my schedule, on my weekly schedule every week. Her name was Shannon. And the very first day that I met her, I knew that she was a rock star teacher. She was coming to me asking about doing flipped classroom in fifth grade. And this was over eight years ago. And so it was definitely a new thing and something that nobody at her school had our school had explored. And so she was ready to try new things right away. And I was ready to work with her on them. So I got in there and I started working with her and I started meeting with her weekly and we did a weekly meeting. And actually, because she and I developed such an amazing relationship, we met for five years in a weekly meeting where we would come together in a coaching cycle and we would meet and we would talk about whatever was on her mind and whatever she wanted to focus on for that week. And then I would go and visit her classroom and see her implement or help her adjust or see how her students are responding. And then the next week we would meet again and we would debrief and we would talk about what she wanted to do. And Shannon's progress that she made because she had a thinking partner, because she had a coach with her, Shannon was able to turn around and teach other teachers this exact same strategy that she was trying to use about the flipped classroom. She was also one of our early adopters around a lot of the different technology that we were putting in place. So I really tried to highlight Shannon. I tried to make sure that everyone knew what she was doing. I told the principal about what she was doing. I told the people across the street in the high school and middle school what she was doing. And then they actually moved her from fifth grade to ninth grade. And then she came over to the high school and she made the same amazing impact. And it was a whole different ball game because now she was teaching older students and different content, but I was still meeting with her every week. And that's how we did coaching cycles. And Shannon was my runner. I have loved working with my runners along the way. I had a few others that I met with like that regularly, and they were the ones that were able to create momentum because they were able to turn around and tell the faculty what they were doing in their classrooms. Or if I was meeting with another teacher, and she wanted to know about exit tickets. I always said, oh my goodness, I was working with Shannon last week and Shannon was using exit tickets. You should go and see what Shannon's doing. I will cover your class so you can go see her exit tickets, right? So I would always point to Shannon and say, maybe you should go see what she's doing. This is how I was able to utilize the runners to really make an impact and help make change happen in my school. This theory of the runners comes from Ron Clark's book, Move Your Bus. And he actually has a whole framework of runners, joggers, walkers, and riders, and how you have these different types of people in your organization. And he talks about very clearly, and he actually does work in a school and, and runs a school. So he talks about how you could spend a whole bunch of time working with one teacher and just pour into her and pour into her and pour into her. And all she's going to do is take her feet and move them down and become a walker from a rider to a walker. Um, but instead, he recommends that you focus your attention on the runners because they're the ones that are actually going to move the organization forward. And this is what I experienced when I started shifting my focus to the runners. It was this amazing transition of realizing that if I put my energy towards someone like Shannon or someone like one of my other runners who I was meeting with weekly, they were able to run faster, try more things, do more things, and then be highlighted amongst the faculty as runners. They were able to be highlighted among the faculty as teachers who were going above and beyond to implement new instructional strategies. And that momentum caught on. Another teacher wanted to see it, and then another teacher wanted to learn more about it. Runners are the key to helping you create momentum in your coaching. And they are not the people, and they're not the people that your admin might tell you to start working with. But I wish I knew 
oh, I so wish I knew that as a new coach that this is where I should focus, that I should focus on the runners and I should start with them because they create momentum for the school, but also they created momentum for me as the coach. Anytime that it got hard, anytime that I hit a brick wall, anytime that I was frustrated with a teacher, all I had to do was go back and work with one of my runners and I felt like I was making progress again. I knew we were going to be able to do it. So as a new coach, you're going to have hard situations, hard teachers, resistant teachers. Find your runners and find them early and start partnering with them and showing them how great it is to have a coach. And then you will always have a group of teachers that you can go back to and work with and know that they are ready to dig in and go deeper. So those people become your people and they are the ones that are going to help you with this big, big goal of making change happen in your school.